everybody is wondering right now, why is Bitcoin not shooting through the frickin' moon? And today I'm going to be talking to you about exactly why there is not a massive rally going on on Bitcoin just yet and why this should not be a surprise to anybody that has studied commodity ETFs that have launched over the last 20 years. If you're worried about Bitcoin right now, I will go ahead and let you know right now, you don't need to be and your positions are sound. And I'm going to tell you today why I believe a huge bull market on Bitcoin will be coming, but we might need 60 to 90 days of corrective movement first. Might not be that bad, but we might not see fireworks again for another couple of months. And we're just going to have to be patient because that's part of what investing is. So let's rewind November of 20, not 20, of 2004. The gold ETF launched and gold had already been on a run since 2001. It had increased by 70% on its uh, spot price over the course of that time. And then we finally found the gold ETF uh, launching. It was the first precious metal commodities ETF of its caliber, the GLD ETF by SPDR. And after that launch, gold would go on to quadruple in value over the next seven years. But something that we should not forget is that within the first 79 days, the first roughly 12, 11, 10, 11 weeks, gold would drop by 11%. It would lose much of the gains that it had created over the course of that rally, uh, over the course of the year of 2004. It lost about nine months worth of gains, and it did drop considerably. 11% for a precious metal that had been in circulation and been traded for thousands of years, had thousands of years to reach price stability. That's a big movement in 90 days less than 90 days. So while we can look at the gold ETF and be excited about a massive rally to come on Bitcoin because we're likely going to see something similar, it may also take time because if we look at that parallel, we also saw a correction on gold. But why? Why do you see a correction on sell the news style events? I want to talk a little bit about the psychology of that because I believe it'll help us to have more confidence in the Bitcoin and cryptocurrency market. And then from there, that'll also help us to inform our trades and our investments. So the question of the day, why has Bitcoin dropped? Well, our original prediction was that Bitcoin would be able to break above its resistance at $45,000 and rally up to about $50,000 within just a few days of the announcement. And that happened. We saw $4.6 billion in trading volume uh, yesterday on the first day of trading, uh, January the 11th. And that was one of the largest ETF launches in history. We didn't have one ETF launch. We had 11. We did not see that with GLD. This is a big, big, big deal. This will go down in history as one of the best launches that a commodities ETF has ever has ever seen. And this will obviously go down in history as the most defining moment for the adoption of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency on the national and global stage that we have seen yet. This was hands down by far and away a near perfect launch. There are a few factors that are drawbacks right now. Of course, we've got the fact that it corrected a little bit. People don't like that. I'm not worried about it at all. It makes sense. Um, but we also have Vanguard, $7.7 trillion in assets under management. They're not listing the Bitcoin ETF. So there are a couple of things that didn't quite go to plan. Of course, Gary Gensler very begrudgingly approved these ETFs. So that's not great either. But ultimately, they launched ton of volume. I believe that's the technical term for 4.6 billion. Ton of volume. Need I say it again? No, I don't need to say it again. The point is, the launch went great. Everybody's freaking out about it. Like, oh no, it's the worst day in history. No, the launch went great. Let's stop complaining about it. The launch went fantastically. We saw almost $100 billion of value flowing into the cryptocurrency space in 24 hours. And I'll be at a good bit of it turned right back around and left, but that shows you what's possible. And I do expect we'll see a the next seven years look a lot like the seven years that followed the gold ETF. But I also think the next 90 days might look like the first next, might look like the first 90 days after the GLD ETF launched as well. Bitcoin is 15 years old. So I think the analogy of a teenager works relatively well. Bitcoin has been looking forward to this one moment for 10 years, this one moment, when Bitcoin has its first kiss, when Bitcoin goes on its first date, it goes to its first prom, first day of high school, first this, first that, Bitcoin is in a age of discovery. And the thing about that age, not being terribly far from that age myself at only 23, it always seems so exciting. And then it happens and you're like, oh wow, that was really cool. But I'm not in heaven, life went on. I still have to get up in the morning, still have to go to work, still have to go to school people are still mean to me sometimes. Life goes on. And so much the same, Bitcoin right now is having a bit of an identity crisis as a teenager does when they have their first kiss. Oh my gosh, I've been defined by this hope. It's, it's coming, my first prom. Oh my gosh, she gave me a hug. We held hands, 
guys. We kid, but you know this was important to us when we were kids, right? You know it was. You know it still is about other things. And the identity of Bitcoin gets defined around this idea of look at what's coming, and then it happens, and then it's, oh, it's in the past, that's cool. This, the excitement transitions to normalcy, and normalcy is not as exciting as excitement. And so you run into an identity crisis. Well, who am I? If I'm not excited about an ETF, then who am I? And so Bitcoin goes into an identity crisis where it could trade at 40 and it could trade at 50 and it could trade it both on the same day because it's testing boundaries. Bitcoin is pushing the envelope. Do I hold 44.3 to 44.7, a critical support zone? Do I hold the uptrending level of support that has been constituting the market for over 13 months now? Do we break above 50? Does this ETF succeed? Does that ETF succeed? Does this ETF go under because it's got too high a fees? Grayscale. Bitcoin is in a rebellious stage right now where it's pushing boundaries and it's trying to figure out who it is. And again, I think it is very fitting that it's 15 years old because that's about the way that it's acting right now. It's a hormonal teenager trying to figure out who it is. But the good news is, just like any teenager, you can't get too far away because there is something baked into your identity. And it's not so much that you have to worry about them changing that identity. A lot of times it's you have to worry about whether or not they'll remember their identity in the first place. And right now, my concern for Bitcoin is not the fact that it's experimenting. My concern for Bitcoin is whether or not the people that are in Bitcoin will remember that no matter how Bitcoin responds to the ETF's launch and the fact that that is no longer on the horizon, but it is instead in the history books, will the people of Bitcoin, which actually make up the hive mind that is Bitcoin, because Bitcoin is not a living organism, it's simply a hive mind, a collective consciousness of traders the world over, will those traders, in other words, the mind of Bitcoin, remember that the value proposition of Bitcoin has not changed. Who Bitcoin is at its core, its core identity of being the first example of digital scarcity in the history of mankind has not changed. We might forget that for the next couple of weeks, but that'll come back into vision very soon. And it won't be forgotten because it can't be changed. It is what Bitcoin is. It is the first example of digital scarcity ever created. And for that, it will always be special because there will never be another first. And that is the first that Bitcoin needs to be the most concerned about. And by Bitcoin, of course, I do mean the traders. And by that, I do mean you. So, and me. So with that in mind, what does this mean? It's a bunch of philosophical hoopla. You'd think I was a teacher trying to, or a guidance counselor or something. With all that in mind, what does that mean for Bitcoin? That means that Bitcoin is going to test levels. It's going to test support. It's going to test resistance. It's going to bounce around. It's going to try and figure out what the new market structure is. It's going to try and figure out, do I like ripped jeans? Do I like jeans with no rips? Do I like long hair? Do I like short hair? Do I like having a beard? Do I not like having a beard? Right? It's a teenager. It's a really helpful analogy when you really think about it. But Bitcoin will not, for the long run, forget who it is. It is the first example of digital scarcity in human history and is the only example of digital scarcity in human history that has ever been valued at a trillion flipping dollars. So let's not forget that either, because we are Bitcoin. We are the collective consciousness that is Bitcoin, because we are the ones that make the price. We are the ones that buy and sell it. It's an inanimate object. But Bitcoin, the idea thereof, make no mistake, is a living organism because it's made up of them. It's a hive mind collective consciousness of traders and investors the world over. You and I are both a member. So let's not forget the underlying intrinsic value. How do we apply this? There's probably going to be corrective movements and there's probably going to be sporadic price action over the next couple of weeks as a result of that identity crisis that Bitcoin's going through because the ETF is no longer on the horizon. It's in the past. Don't be surprised if we trade at 40. Don't be surprised if we fill the CME gap. Don't be surprised if we trade to 50. Don't be surprised if we move $6,000, $7,000, $8,000 in a day, both directions. But don't forget that through all of the identity crisis, its identity hasn't actually really changed all that much. It's still what it was before. And this story is only bullish for Bitcoin. Only bullish for Bitcoin. The only thing that's really changed for the negative is that all the FOMO that drove this giant rally is kind of gone because it's already happened. So keep your dollar cost averaging, in my opinion. Not specific financial advice. It's my opinion. Continue to dollar cost average. Look forward to 100K Bitcoin. I think it's coming this year. Haven't wavered on that. I think the altcoins are going to go through a massive rally. If you want to see more of my thoughts on why I think Bitcoin will still go to $100,000 despite this whole identity crisis that it's going through right now, make sure to go back and watch the Climate of Crypto episode that went out yesterday where I tell you exactly when I believe Bitcoin will hit 100 k If you haven't already, make sure to sign up for the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy so you can understand markets the way that I just shared with you my understanding of the markets because at the end of the day, if you don't understand markets, good luck making profit in them. 
hate to say it, but it's true. Hit the like button if you liked the video. If you didn't like the video, that's what the dislike button's for. We like the engagement either way. We appreciate the feedback. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Peace.